Oh, hi there. Hello. Hey now. Hola. And ba weep grana weep nini bong. However you want to say it, welcome to that Kev One Show. My guest today is a Hollywood icon who has a face you instantly recognize from near countless roles from Office Space as Tom Smikowski, Santa multiple times, Bandits with Billy Bob Thornton and Bruce Willis, Joe Dirt, Lethal Weapon 4, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, Casino with Robert De Niro and of course directed by Martin Scorsese, Fried Green Tomatoes, I'll even take it back to like grade school, I remember the Black Rain poster with Michael Douglas in the video stores, <laughs> but of course his explosive role as the quartermaster is where everyone like probably knew him from then on forever, I'm talking to of course famed character actor and super actor in his own right, Richard Real. welcome to the show. Well thank you, good to, good to be here. Oh man, it's an honor to have you on the show. Someone of uh, your merit, and oh, how's uh, how's life in Hollywood right now? Um, it's uh, trying to get started again, but uh, there seems to be some question about uh, just just how solid this uh, contract is that we that we're agreeing to. So it, 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 we'll know more in a couple of weeks, I think. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's crazy that it's slogging on uh, so long. Cause I thought it was kind of over. On the the news, kind of made it seem like, oh, the strike's over. And then I had an interview with um, the screenwriter um, Lindsay Stidham, and she was like, well, it's not quite over. Like, oh, it's not. It was news to me that day. Um, that uh, yeah, it's yeah, still being uh, a yeah. yeah. So, huh, man. Well, any um, do you have any breaking news? Any uh, inside information on that by chance that the uh, you know the common folk out there might not quite know? I, I really don't know hmm. much going on to tell you the truth. I, I, I've been sort of uh, out of the loop on that as, uh, as well, just uh, getting the, the, the day-to-day uh, responses. And uh, I was happy with to hear that when the uh, when it went when it went to the board and they uh, approved it. Uh, but then I was a little nervous when they, they only approved it by eighty-six percent. Oh, okay. uh, and, yeah. You know that you know that's 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 still a good you know that that's, a, that's still a good amount, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, it, it, made, it made things a little nerve wracking. Yeah, I mean it's better than fifty or sixty percent. But that's a little too. It's a little close. A little closer than I we'd like. Really, it's like what is that? You know, yeah, what, is, exactly. what are all the details that people weren't exactly ecstatic about? Yeah. Well, I yeah, uh, I think I think uh, the uh, AI seems to be the thing that is getting the most press right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, in, in my opinion, um, at least rightfully so, because that's like the most scary thing about it because there's so much it's it's I mean, maybe you don't understand but it's, there's so much we don't understand about it it feels like you know exactly and yeah. where, where it's going even or you know what i mean almost maybe no one can quite understand it but it's just scary like i mentioned on the show previously to um some actors it's like you see people on like um I, it might be a different platform but like tiktok and instagram and you would swear it's tom cruise or jenna ortega or some other actors <laughs> but it's not them and you, you kind of know it's not yeah. them only because they're doing backflips off stuff or whatever and you're like well that's not quite yeah, them perfect. But well, that's their face, and it's like I mean, you could be framed for murder or anything. It's wild. It's crazy, you know. Yeah. 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 Oh my lord, man. Oof. Um. So the but strike. I, I don't think. I don't think there. I don't think there is ever any uh, feeling that much is going to happen before the first the first of the year, anyway. So that you know that gives everybody about six weeks to kind of get the whole thing together and, and figure out what they're going to do. Yeah. So, I mean, are you, um, are you back to like rehearsing for anything or there's, are, this, are there just like tentative deals and tentative dates for jumping back into some of your production? Someone as busy no, as you? No, or... the only thing, the only thing that changed is that, um, uh, as of the day that they, uh, announced about a week or so ago when they announced that the, the contract was, uh, was looked like it was going to pass. Um, suddenly there was a, a number of, um, screenings where where they wanted us to, to show up because until then we weren't allowed to go to any 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 screenings of, mm. of, of movies not promoting any of the films that we had done so uh i was uh, uh let me see thursday i think i was at one for um adventures uh, uh of the naked umbrella Ooh. which in turkey yeah it, it's actually uh, quite a quite a wonderful film and, mm. and the people that that saw it were 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 uh, very supportive of it, oh, and awesome. um, and then tonight I'm going to uh, uh, to one uh, called the Invisible Raptor, 
which mm. I, I think should be a hoot. It's a um, it's a it's a comic horror film. Really? Wow. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> What's that about exactly? Without spoiling it. <laughs> well, uh, evidently the uh, mm. the government has has uh, done experiments and had and they figured out how to um, make uh, a raptor invisible. Oh but my. they haven't figured out how to how to contain it once it is invisible yeah. and it runs away. Oh my. So they have to figure out how to, how to get it back. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, that's and, okay. and, and, Yeah, and of course, all the effects are you know you're 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 you're, you're playing to yourself because there obviously is no raptor. There, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> wow, and it's invisible. Oh my lord! Wow. Huh. Wait, now, how did you, was there someone just going, just going like, go on action? Or was it like, was there like a ball or anyone in like in a green suit or anything? Or? Uh, none, of the, none of the scenes that I did involved balls. But I remember, I remember when I did Muddy Joe Young, where they had, uh, they had people with, uh, with uh, large uh, uh, eight masks uh, in the background huh. and, and tennis balls or whatever. You know, you have, you have various, various ways to try it. And uh, secure the uh, the eye line for the actors. <laughs> Man, it's great. Yeah, a lot of people just think Hollywood and and just uh, you know professional acting anywhere you know on location where I have you is like just glamorous. But a lot of times it's like funny. How many times on set you feel or look ridiculous, right? Like <laughs> like in a green screen well, yeah. suit now, now, or now this to... or yeah. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes sometimes you feel a little bit left out. And, and for Mighty Joe Young, they had um, they had uh, ten people that. Uh, uh, that that uh, took care of the um, uh, of, of the uh, animatronic uh, ape, mm. including one guy that was inside him to make wow. his to make his chest move up and down. Oh my god! That is so and, cool. And uh, and they spent they spent uh, fifteen minutes between each take uh, grooming this 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 uh, beautiful uh, uh, thing that 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 Rick Baker had created. Oh. The great Rick Baker, my God, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh man, yeah. It's oh one of the greatest things about you being in so many things is the the and you're still working to this day, obviously. But the is the era or maybe eras you've worked through with technology jumping and stuff. Because if they made a Mighty Joe Young now, a reboot or a sequel or a you know what have you, um, it wouldn't be the same. I mean, we'd have so much CGI and stuff. There probably wouldn't be a guy in a suit. There probably wouldn't be a suit. It'd probably be you know there might be some or some puppetry, but it'd probably be mostly just digital. It's so wild. Well, and of course, that, this, that was a remake of the original Mighty Joe Young. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh. So it, it had already changed quite a bit by then. Yeah, and you were the one, I mean, I remember seeing that, I think I rented it that, like on VHS back in the day, but like, that's like with Charlie's, Th wasn't Charlie's Theron in that too? Or? Yeah, 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 I think it was one of her, yeah, that's the one. One of her first, first big star girls, yeah. Yeah. Yes, she was like when she was the it girl. <laughs> I mean, God, you've been... Yeah, well, she, I mean, she's very young. She, I, don't, she, I don't even know if she was 20 then. Wow. But, you know, right around that, she's right around that age. Huh. Man. That is so incredible. Man, yeah. you, you've just been in... Yeah. Oh. And you've just been in, like, everything. I mean, like, just when you pop up, like, you know it's you know it's at least a quality production when you're in it. So I love that, like, well, people like you and, and, like, Fred Melamed we had a recently. There's a lot of people like you who oh, are... Oh, yeah. And, and, Oh yeah. yeah, you guys work on. You guys worked on. I think want to say um, at least Fuzzy Head recently off the top of my head, and probably a bunch of stuff. Yeah. So you guys have both been around forever. Oh, did you go to that premiere? Because well, I know that premiered recently and won Best I Picture. Did not, I did not make it. Yeah, I did not make it to that premiere. That was sort of on on the edge, and I know mm. I know some people weren't able to, weren't able to do it. I know that Alicia was, uh, didn't feel that she could do it, and, and so. Oh yeah, Alicia uh, Witt, who got a lot of critical acclaim for yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, she was terrific, and she's oh. absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah. And you're of course, you of course yeah, played. She... Yeah. Oh, sorry, what? Uh, I say, I say, Wendy did such a terrific job writing and directing. I mean, and, and starring in it. Yeah, uh, pers personal incredible. story of her own, right, from her childhood, right, or inspired by well, it in part? Yeah, I think I'm inspired by it. Yeah, that, yeah, because yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, yeah. Oh, I can't wait to see that. Cause I'm I'm waiting to see if I can see it on um, the big screen. Cause she told me when I interviewed her that that it is available online streaming or, or online in various places. But I yeah, I kind of want to see if yeah, I can see I it. Yeah, I think on... it is on some platforms now. Yeah. Yeah, I want to see if I can see it like in an art house uh, theater around or something first before I uh, 
you know, get on Amazon. Oh, that'd be wherever. great. Yeah. yeah, that'd be well worth it. And you play a sheriff again in it, right? For the like the umpteenth time. I play a sheriff again in it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, although, you know, because because it's Wendy, it's it's not it's never just just the sheriff. Um, mm. uh, my dialogue to to her is is um, is twisted in such a way it's, it's how she perceives it, mm-hmm. not necessarily what my character would be saying. Yeah, oh, I can't wait to see it. And like, uh, well, no, spo- oh, I haven't seen it, so I guess I can't spoil it. At least not on purpose. But uh, yeah, it's like, um, because her character doesn't know if she committed this crime, this murder, right. so she doesn't know. Yeah, oh, it looks so good and trippy. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. And her her her, uh, her first feature is really great too. Birds of a Feather is wonderful. Yeah, real critical claim. I think that one best picture at um, Slam Dance as well, right? Or at least somewhere. Yeah, that's spots. Fine, that's, yeah. 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 Hmm. Huh. And speaking of trippy, I know you were in um a show that not a lot of people caught. I loved it. I caught it. Uh, now Apocalypse by um director oh, yeah. Greg Rack. Yeah, I've been a fan of his work Greg since like, yeah since Doom Generation. I've been a fan of his work. What was the atmosphere on that set? I mean, because he's so visual. It, it was it was quite wonderful. I mean, it it, it was a but it was a it was a TV series. Yeah, and on uh, way, Stars yeah, or Showtime. Stars. Yeah. I saw, yeah, Stars. I think. Yeah. yeah. And and so it was it was it was different. I mean, I had done hmm. two films with Brad uh, with Greg before uh, before that. I did I did uh, um, uh, oh shoot, uh, Smiley Face. Uh-huh. Uh, but but before that, I did um, oh golly, I can't think of the title of it. But it, it, uh, it, they were both just wonderful experiences, and, and so I was. Really excited when when I got a call saying, "Would you come and and play the head of this this male uh, uh, group uh, <laughs> yeah. that that, the, that these yeah these guys are going to?" And and it was it was great fun. We we did it was just terrific. But everything was it was uh, TV is, is is so much faster than than even independent film. And and so you know you've got to you've got to get you've got to get all of the stuff in. Man, you know, and make your days, and, and and it's just, you know, it, it it becomes that that sort of pressure on top of everything else. And I thought he handled it great, and uh, and evidently it did very well. I, I never had, I, I've never had stars, so I haven't been able to see it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, how did I, I'm not sure how, I'm trying to remember how I saw it on the I think, I don't know if I got, like, a free trial, because I haven't had a Star subscription, not bashing stars, <laughs> not saying they're not subscription, but I never had a Star subscription either, but I feel like maybe I had, I got a free trial, because I was really excited about that series, and then I, I know I binged it, so yeah, I think I did that, <laughs> but yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Great. Hmm. And, like, uh, just so many, I mean, like... Yeah, like, um, my tech gave me a little card with some of the stuff you've done. I was like, I already know a lot of his stuff. But, like, yeah, I mean, you were even, like, in, like, corporate. Speaking of another, uh, you know, short, I think yeah. it was one or two seasons with the great um, Lance Reddick. That was oh so gosh, good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Lance was a terrific, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we did, actually, I did a film with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lance Hurt, I mean, he, he wasn't sick then at all. But yeah. Uh, it was, it was, it, as it turned out, it was just... It was one of the last things he did. It was called Faith Based. Oh, what's and, that about? Um, well, it's about these two uh, slackers that uh, are looking for a way to make money without having to do any work. Hmm. And somebody tells them if, if you do a, if you make a film that's faith based, um, you'll <laughs> you automatically you'll, you'll make money on it. Just because there's so and, many people so who are they, religious, or, or what, or because yeah, because <sighs> because so many people will will. Will watch it or buy oh. it or rent it or you know whatever, and um, and so they so they make this, this they create this uh, uh, science fiction story uh, and um, about uh, uh, Christ shows shows up on this planet that they're exploring. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, Lance played. And this is, I mean, these guys, these guys are wonderful. I've done a number of films with them. Hmm. Uh, and, uh, and the, the, their idea of this was that, um, uh, there, you know, there are a couple of, a couple of, uh, uh, Caucasian guys and, but they, uh, oh, the, the yeah. one, they, they decided that Lance would be adopt him. And so, <laughs> and so he's, he's Lance's adopted son. Oh my and, God. <laughs> and then Lance, 
yeah. And then, then he, he comes and watches them do some shooting and and and, and gets involved in it. You know, it, it, was, <laughs> it was. I think it's, I think it was great. Uh, I, they got some amazing people. I mean, uh, uh, oh gosh, I think all, all of them. You know, but it was just. Uh, it was just an incredible cast. The faith is looking yeah, up. Yeah, definitely it's will. So I always love his work. Yeah. He's such great. He had such gravitas and everything with his voice and everything. And yeah, just his whole presence. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, you saw him once. Yeah, you remember? You remembered him forever. You're like, okay. You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. No, I, I first time I met him was on a plane to Vancouver. I was trying to go shoot something there, and he was doing he was doing that series that he was shooting up there uh, um, with uh, with uh, Jonah Jonas. Uh, oh golly. Hmm. Uh, yeah, it was. It was a. It was sort of a, a dystopian thing. There was a. Oh, was it Re- Resident a, Resident Evil? Maybe I know he did that. No, oh, wasn't no, that? no. Okay. Not 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 even that. Yeah, although they they had like about six, five or six seasons. I mean, it was a really good. Mm. I enjoyed watching it. But I can never remember the title. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, I mean, it, oh, you just work with so many greats. Uh, even um. I was trying to think, because I started to remember, because you've been in so much, and I wanted to talk about maybe stuff that you didn't get to talk about all the time. Well, okay, see, another thing I remember that you were in there was so great. I wish I had, like, action figures from it, if they even made any. Uh, Axe Cop, that animated series that you were in, that was incredible. Oh, I, was, I don't know if they made any, if they made you know any I mean? uh, figures, figures or not. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, it's because it was animated, so, so yeah. I'm not sure that it was, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I did two episodes of that. It was great. Yeah. Oh, you were you great. Know, again, yeah. It was such a good group. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you know, now I'm remembering literally in this moment talking to you. I'm remembering, I remember when I watched it and I, and I, I binged it, but I think I was watching it week by week whenever it came out. I don't know if it came by, I don't know if it, I can't uh-huh. remember if it came out two by two episodes or what, but, um, I remember that year. I was like, I'm gonna be axe cop for Halloween. So it'd be a simple costume. I'd be a co- <laughs> you're a cop uniform, and you hold an axe or a plastic axe, you know, whatever. But then I think I forgot because I, I was an axe cop ever for Halloween. So I think I forgot by the time Halloween rolled around. You know. <laughs> but yeah. Oh. <laughs> Man. When, so when you do like animated series like Axe Cop, um, like. How do you uh, prepare for that? Are you like really? More, are you animated in the booth yourself? Like, I know I've seen footage of people doing that. Are you more like animated? Or are you just kind of there and in your head, just performing with your voice well, yourself? It, it mostly, it most, mostly because they they, uh, they get the voice first, and and then and then they animate to, to the voice. Oh, okay, yeah. And then you have to now often you'll have to go back in and do some tweaking. But uh, uh, everybody does things a little differently. The very first. Mm-hmm. The very first uh, animated feature I did was Home on the Range for Disney, and um, oh. and they had, they called me in, and um, I it was about four hours, four or five hours. I was just I laid down and, and, you know every line that the I played the sheriff, every line that the, that the sheriff had. We did a couple variations of each one, and uh, and so that was it. So I said I said so so when is this coming out? They said what do you mean? I, I said well you know. I, we're, we're done now. We're done now, aren't we? And they said, oh, no, no. You'll be back about every every six months to do some more stuff. And that was the case. I mean, huh. about two months later, I, I, I went back and they introduced me to the guy who was going to animate my character. Because at that time, it was going to be the last drawn um, rather than pixel um, wow. uh, cartoon feature. Huh. And, uh, and, yeah, and so that was great. And then, you know, they... they videotape it while you're doing it so they get a sense of of of, of your body and, and your and your face while you're while you're saying the words mm. um but I, I did i did a series the series called mm. core it was a, it was mm. an extension of of the of the uh, uh the bender um oh series. the last airbender or whatever that is that is right yeah, yeah. Airbender and all that. Mm. yeah yeah mm. and um and i i played her her uncle oh. and um and the uh, the director of that, who had directed a, a bunch of a bunch of animated uh, series, um, tried to get as many of the people in each scene into the into the studio as possible. Now, you couldn't turn and you know and look to the people that you were playing uh, with mm. because because you had to, you had to play to the to the microphone. Yeah, <laughs> but um, but. Having them in the same room with you, uh, you really, really uh, 
gave an incredible energy to it. I mm. think made the scenes, I, I think, much more um, uh, specific and much and much more active than than it, would, than it is when you're just in there by yourself, you know, and and um, and trying, you know, and trying to try to do the lines. Um, and that's what that was. That was very exciting. Oh yeah, huh? Yeah, it's, 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 wow, it's incredible just how that works. It's like, I, imagine, I, I can imagine being on like a series where you're, you know, you don't even meet the person you're with, you're in scenes with for like some time until like a Comic-Con or some event premiere and you're, oh my God, it's you, you know? <laughs> wow. Well, you know, that, that, that happens all, all the time. Yeah. Films. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, there was one, one year, I think it was in the year Scenes together, but in the other two films, I never saw her until uh, until the premieres. Oh my god! Oh wow! <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. Huh. Man, so you probably known her since uh, Fried Green Tomatoes, or was there an earlier picture with her? Or was it the? Uh, yes. No, this one was. It was after Fried Green Tomatoes. Hmm. So it was just called uh, Prelude to a Kiss. Oh yeah. And, uh, Classic. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then uh, also we did. Uh, no, actually, I guess that was all the same year. Uh, Fried Miss Reddos I think was made the first, and then Trailing to a Kiss, and then at the end of the year, uh, I did uh, um, uh, Shadows and Fog, the uh, uh, Woody Allen film. Mm. And uh, and, uh, and uh, I, I I never saw her uh, in in in. Uh, Fried green tomatoes because I was in all past my stuff, <laughs> in the present time stuff, huh. and uh, and we and uh, it just happened that we were not many scenes together in Shadows of the Fog either. Oh my gosh! Conspiracy, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Did did that happen a lot with um some of the actors on like um Casino by chance? Because uh, so many people, I oh, feel like yeah. I I would love to meet. Period from it. Like Martin, I mean, obviously, he works with Martin Scorsese he's directing it, but uh, like you know, Joe Pesci or Sharon Stone or De Niro, did you get to play with all of them? Or well, see? yeah, we were all we were all on the one scene to get together, and then and then most of the rest of my stuff was uh, well, some most of my stuff was either with with De Niro or Pesci, uh, both of whom mm. I worked with before, and uh, uh, but uh, I, I didn't see I I literally didn't see anybody else. There was one guy that <laughs> um. When we got the, when we got the, they said, if he tells you anything, you know, listen, listen to him, and and uh, you know, take take, uh, you know, take the advice of what he what he says, uh -huh. and um, but don't you know, but don't uh, approach him. And evidently, he was he was uh, he was the technical advisor, quote unquote. Uh -huh. Quote unquote. <laughs> huh. Wow. Man. I mean, working like in a Martin Scorsese pick is a pretty rare experience for most people, at least. Um, does he run like a crazy oh, yeah. tight ship, like I would imagine? As because it's mute. His it's very, very tight. Mm. But it, it, as it, as it happens, you know, sometimes he puts himself in in, um, in situations that, that 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 make it a little difficult. We were shooting in the actual house that belonged to. Uh, that, that that belonged to the character that uh, that uh, dinner was playing. Wow. Uh, on, Huh. Right, right on the on the golf course there because they wanted to land the plane. There was a lot of things, a lot of that they wanted to use, huh. and um, and the, the 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 room where we were shooting the scene where where Becky throws me down the on the stairs. Oof, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it was it was two hundred and seventy degrees of, oh. of of windows. You know, it had windows on three sides. And um, and so the, they would have to wait until the light was right to oh. shoot, and, and then it would, then there was just this mad dash to get you know uh, as as many takes in it as they could. Oh, and yeah. um, plus he plus he he had created this sort of uh, uh, um, complex uh, um, uh, uh, camera work. He had he had two um, curved tracks, and the cameras were going. Uh, from one end to the other, back and back and forth, all all the time while, while we were while we were shooting, and we were going um, uh, across the tracks, 
if that makes sense. Yeah, kind, of st- kind of stepping over it, kind of, or yeah, yeah. yeah when you curve your phone. And, but, wow. and the thing was, you know, I, 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 you know, how I, I, in my mind, I was going, how's this possibly going to work? The <laughs> cameras are moving all the time. Wow. We're going to, and, and it was it, when I saw it because you didn't notice the movement of the cameras, but you felt it. And you know, and and that and it was really, it was really, it was really amazing how he had figured that out. He and uh, the the cinematographer figured that all out. But yeah, he would he would be there, and they would be talking about, about films and all that. As soon as the cinematographer says, "Okay, now," it was like boom! All of a sudden, everything was on go and go. And uh, and he really would, you know, would, would get it done. The uh, the, stair, the spiral staircase that uh, that Bill throws me down. That, that was a piece of a piece. They cut a hole in the floor of, this, of the house that these, wow. that these people now own. You know? yeah. And 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 uh, and put this staircase in, so it was kind of wobbly going down all the time. Huh. Um, and uh, you know, and they and they had uh, they had uh, gone to these people and said, "We want to use the house. We know that you know." You, you, It'll be different you know, for, to move you out for a while. We'll pay to put you up someplace. Um, and um, and they said, well, we, we have a big holiday party every year. And they said, oh, we'll be long gone by then. Uh, you know, but don't worry about it. Well, they won't. They were, they were uh, only some months behind by, by the time the holidays were showing up. Uh-huh. And, and it became this whole thing. Can we, can we get... Can we get the, get all the scenes we need to shoot in in the house in before before they they kick us out? Yeah, but it, it was great. It was amazing. Huh. Wow. And so, what did that entail for you? Is it like a stuntman who does the the stair work, but it cuts to them right after you kind of leap nope, partially? Wow. wow, that's incredible. Huh. Yeah. 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 You know, I I just done a uh, about a eight months or nine months earlier, I had done this movie with, with Joe called Public Eye, in which he played Ouija. Oh, yeah, I yeah. Played this cop, mm. yeah, that, that, that keeps, that he keeps showing up. He's like, following me. Uh, it's one of all the cases that I'm involved in. And, uh, and so, you know, we, we didn't become fast friends, but we got, you know, we got to know each other. And, so, and, um, uh, and, uh, you know, and he would, he was, he would say things, things like, uh, you know, um, uh, he, he said, he said, he said, he said, watch, you know, watch De Niro. He, 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 every, every day he's going to do something slightly different, depending <laughs> how he feels about his characters at the moment. And, um, and, and when they, when, of uh, course, he uses which, which take is going to be uh, the mask. Uh, he's going to have to go, go to the, uh, a script supervisor and find out what he did. You know, every, he used to be everything. Uh, and, um, and it turned out that that's exactly what happened. But then, you know, it, 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 good enough to do it, he turned around through the lots and he had it spent every time after that for all of the coverage and everything. It was just great. <laughs> that's incredible jeez huh yeah. wow huh. man always the classics with them always the classics yeah 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 what do you what would you say you get recognized from the most is it like that is something huge like casino or is it more like modern family or the mini project something more more current or? yeah to tell you the truth it's, it's usually the opposite mm Classic, yeah. Huh? Yeah, there's probably, there's probably huge. There's probably different huge like bumps in recognition from a two different generations discovery, like on cable, video. Yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, we, when we, it came out. They, Bill Schumacher and Peter for one week, and then it was gone. And um, <sighs> and so and you know. Six months later, um, people would start quoting 
buffer space to me on the street. <sighs> and, um, and, and, I, and so I, I was doing another uh, Fox show at that time, Drawn for Life. Oh, yeah, classic. So I ran, yeah, so I ran into the money at the, at the up front. And I, I friend in you know, all of a sudden now, um, in my country, all of a sudden now I'm, I'm I, I, people are, are quoting office space to me on the street. And he says, oh, yeah, it just came on, on, on uh, Comedy Central. I said, oh, okay, that makes sense. And, and um, so about um, well, three or four months later, and it was huge on Comedy Central. Yeah, they were running around the clock, it almost feels like, at some point, because it was so huge. So they did, they did, pretty much, because they owned it. Yeah. They, oh. They, they owned it the that makes sense, then. So they, they could play it as much as they wanted. Get their money's worth. And, um, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And, uh, and then uh, Entertainment Weekly, the magazine, uh, came out uh, uh, that, that February or whatever. But they, um, uh, a, a, a issue of, uh, about about a cult film. Hmm. Not cult films, you know. So I said, well, it's got to be in here. So I picked up a copy, and I'm looking through. And, you know, 50, 40, 30, top 10. But then I said, it, it, it wasn't mentioned in, at all. I said, this, this is incredible. I can't believe that. I turned the page and they said, in a class by itself, office space. <laughs> wow. And, and, and it was. People can't, people, and, and it's the sort of thing where people who work in offices um, will quote something from it. And if the office workers, uh, the office worker according to doesn't recognize it, they, you know, they, they, they have them watch it. Yeah. And, and so you have, you have several generations of people now that are, you know, that have been, have been watching it over, over the, in the 22, 24 years, now, I guess. Since yeah. It. And it probably got another bump from like, I mean, from the Comedy Central, from the video release, from DVD, different aspects. And then I'm, I know like memes and gifts, people are like sending like to each other on their phones, you know, like. Right. <laughs> I'm going to have to come in to work on Sun this weekend. It'll, oh, it's so good. Yeah, I, I find myself quoting on occasion. Like, yeah. it's <laughs> When someone says something like, uh, you missed something, I'm like, oh, you missed work. Oh, I wouldn't say I missed it. Just, yeah, there's so many constant quotes from that. <laughs> when was the last time you watched it? Um, Kelly, all the way through. I can't remember. Hmm. I, whenever it shows up, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely watch it. And, and, but I, have, I haven't had... Uh, I see you guys have been working for a while, so I'm, mm. I'm a little bit oh, on that. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah, like, that's just... And that was before The Office show came out. So, I mean, yeah, that was definitely... That was definitely the It quote movie, like, yeah. Yeah. Before Big Lebowski, and before, yeah, that was... Oh. And Mike yeah. Judge, he just... Yeah, he has... He's really special, you know? Like, I, I love Office Space and, like, you know, um, King of the Hill. He has his own kind of voice. I remember a similar film, yeah. um, what was the future one? Idiocracy was so great. I remember it was yeah, a classic. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then, and it kind of, um, it didn't do super well in theaters, I think, because some of the sponsors were like, maybe Fuddruckers was offended or something. And then that became a huge well, hit, quotable, quotable, quotable yeah. with cable. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, and then there was a big push to, to, uh, release, re release it, uh, uh, recently, but they, for some reason they did, they, they did, but I'm not sure why. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. It's just funny how these things work, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're just always popping up on cable. And so I was pleasantly surprised when I saw you on, um, one of my favorite shows that just wrapped, well, wrapped fairly recently, a little while ago now, but, um, Barry, when you were the warden, playing a warden yeah. again, <laughs> once again playing law yeah. enforcement, but you were there as the warden. It totally made sense. Of course, you're, you're playing the warden. You know? But I loved your line. I mean, it's still, you're just so iconic, Richard. You know, when you're like, what is it? I want to say, it might be Richard. Where's Barry Berkman? It was just so, yeah, it was great. <laughs> it was like, with the exploding well, that, was, that was a Yeah, mm -hmm. that was a really kind of interesting thing. Uh, um, I, I'd never gotten any auditions for, for Barry, and uh mm. But um, when my when my nephew um, uh, he went to school in, in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, mm -hmm. uh, as it turns out, with with Bill Hader, mm -hmm. and uh, and and when they uh, moved out here, to, uh, they and, and two other buddies, uh, the four four of them moved out to L.A. Uh, to try and make it out here after they, after they graduated from from school.
school in, in Arizona. Uh, and uh, so the first weekend that they came and that they came, they uh, I, I went over there to see how you know my nephew was doing. I how they all generally doing. Like, and I you know took them all all over to I, I think Bob's Big Way was the nearest restaurant to where mm. their, their apartment was, and you know and, and, and got them all all uh, uh, dinner there. And you know didn't think much of it then. And, and they um, uh, uh, Bill set up a, a, a sketch group, and so I would. I, uh, and my my nephew did the sound for it, and uh, mm. and uh, everybody and, and one of the guys Nick was a was the videographer, and we and and, and so I would go and I would go on and support it all, you know, all the time. Mm. And then and then uh, I heard from I heard that uh, that Bill had gotten S- SNL, and uh, and so my nephew threw this little party to you know to, to send him off, and and that you know that was that was the last time I talked to him, literally. Uh, and you know, that, and uh, all, and he uh, evidently he remembered that, and 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 wanted to have wanted to have me in the show at some point, mm. and you know, and was just looking for something that would be that, you know, would, would be the right sort right sort of thing to, to use me. In. Well, just as a kind of thank you for the support previously, or yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you fit yeah. right in. I mean, of course, the warden. I mean, it was just perfect, isn't it? Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we shot that up at Tehachapi, and we set it up at the prison. Uh, oh, there, so that a real was, prison. I mean, it looked like it. Yeah, so, wow. Yeah. Half of it's uh, Some of the stuff we did actually shoot on stage, but, but uh, yeah, we shot a, like, a fair amount of it up up there. Wow. Was that wild doing that, or...? Yeah, I, I I did it a couple times before. I did it. I did a, a movie called um, uh, was it called Killer? Um, it was with James Woods, hmm. uh, based on the on the first uh, the first uh, 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 serial killer, known serial killer in, in America. Got hmm. out of Panzram, and um, and played the warden the warden in that, and we shot it in uh, in. Uh, uh, Rhode Island, and uh, and we had shot a bunch of a bunch of it for about we shot for about a week in uh, uh, at Cranston, the uh, the uh, Rhode Island state prison. Wow, I, I guess they do that a lot because sometimes you see stuff. I mean, especially natural born killers, famously, but like a lot of yeah. movies and shows where they're in a prison, you can really tell this kind of like kind of dark yeah. vibe. You can yeah. just kind of really, you can really just feel it when it when you they really do film there. I feel like I remember the, recalling that in Barry, maybe not in that interrogation scene, that's probably one of the stages, right? But I remember when people were running across from a building to building in the prison when that was all going on. I was like, oh, that seems like it's a real problem. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, huh. yeah, that was, yeah. Yeah. I mean, since you played like a warden multiple times, uh, and Santa multiple times, <laughs> so many law enforcement yeah. characters, I mean, plus you had, when you play such so many similar roles over and over, um, like you're playing a sheriff again and again, or a warden again and Santa. Um, do you approach the character preparation differently, or is it the same prep? Would you say, you know, like well, well, to get in the vibe? It's different because, yeah, it's different because they're they're different in every yeah you know in, yeah. in every film. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, they're, they're they're written differently. Uh, mm. Yeah, I've, I've done. I just finished doing um, another Santa in a, in a movie called Hatch, hmm. where this this big based on a true story that. This this couple had um, uh, were going to buy a house and they had and they had put this uh, this uh, money in the escrow and then and then the uh, somebody hacked into it and got and got they got the money uh, or got them to send the money to them and um, and so they wrote this uh, this sort of revenge fantasy about getting getting the guy who who did that and and uh, you know and, and torturing him till he. They gave he gave them back the money, and uh, for some and for some reason, you know, whatever was in their their minds at the time, um, they decided that they decided that it was going to be um, uh, that the CIA uh, was was co co renting this um, uh, mattress store in uh, in Tampa Tampa Bay, Florida. Um, and with Santa Claus, this is where he goes uh, during the off season. <laughs> and, uh, and, and and so and so Santa gets sent on the on, on all on all the you know the torture and all that. Oh my! And, you know, 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, so it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not yeah. the fat that you would expect. Well, that's a different one. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, but, you know, but even, you know, when I, when I did, uh, Harold and Kumar's, uh, 3D mm-hmm. Santa, I mean, here was, here was, here's a Santa that got shot out of the air and, and ends <laughs> up, uh, smoking a bong with the guy. You know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it's, it, 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 you know, everyone is, everyone is different. They're coming. Mm. The, the writers and directors are coming from a different a different angle, mm-hmm. and so it's, you're never just doing this the same one. And, mm-hmm. and like and like I said, in, in Fuzzy Head, um, the character, although it, he appears at first to be a you know a, a, a normal sheriff, he, he, words are coming out of his mouth that make no sense, or that would make no sense for for a sheriff for mm-hmm. a sheriff to say, yeah. because there was a what what she is perceiving. Wow. Yeah, I can't still can't wait to see that one. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So would you say your process, uh, what's your, um, unless you don't like revealing it, some people might not, but, uh, what's your pro your basic process when you get into a role? Like, are you kind of method? Do you just kind of memorize your lines and then get to set and you're into character on the day? Or are you kind of like in the character in your head a bit, like days before on average or. Well, I like to have a little, I like to have a little time to, mm-hmm. you know, to prepare. Um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, it's, 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 it's mainly, um, uh, reading the script and going over the script, and then and then uh, getting focusing more on on the scenes that that you know my character is, is doing, and um, and you know and finding out what what the you know what the character wants and needs in those, in those scenes, and and whether you're going to get them or not, what he's willing to do in order to get them, mm-hmm. and um, and then you know a, a lot of it depends upon you know the, who you're working with and what because so much so much of it is 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 what is given to you uh in, in the uh you know in, in the scene in the scene work and mm, uh mm-hmm. and and that's you know and that's very important you, you know um in in the sabbath thing i i worked both with um with adults and with with a couple of kids and the kids were, were great i mean they're fun they were brilliant but uh, mm, mm. uh you know but, but they had a whole they have a whole different process and, mm. and so and so it, it's it was fun to kind of to, to kind of try and suss out what what you know what they were trying trying to, to do huh. um you know and, and some directors like like more um improv some like mm. you know the lines to be exactly you know it's it's it, it, it every situation is different so you just have, have to leave yourself open to you know be as prepared as you can with the material and leave yourself open to however the director is, is going to work mm. Do you naturally um do you, do you mess with the script a little bit? Do you naturally kind of like uh, try to change a word here and there to make it your own? Sometimes you pretty much straightforward in it, or you uh. Um, I I, I usually you know I figured they you know they probably spent a lot of time <laughs> you know choosing the words that mm-hmm. that that that, that they put down. So I try to figure out why they you know, why it's this word and not and not another one mm. and. Uh, and, and I, I try, I try and make that work. If I can, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll say, well, how, how, you know, yeah. what if I said this instead? Yeah. I mean, but I, I won't, I won't just make changes mm. on my own. Yeah, if it doesn't just roll off the tongue, you ask. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I did an episode of Entourage, and it was when, uh, I know, it was when Rain Wilson was guest starring on it. Um, it was a Comic Con episode, and I noted that every time he did a take, he, he had a closing line before cut. And it was like he always he tweeted every single take, and I was I was like oh, I wanted to try to watch that episode and remember which one he did because <laughs> yeah, it's interesting the different ways. Yeah. Huh. Well, it sounds like I was, I was looking at this one note card. I'm like I was like oh these are uh, a lot of things you did. Like I forget you were on Buffy and stuff, but and you, I think you already I was gonna ask, but you already pretty much answered by saying it's probably Office Space as the thing you're noticed from the most on the street, but yeah. like being in so many, so many things, awesomely, mind you, I mean, like Buffy the Vampire Star, that was my, my high school jam, and like Ali McBeal, L.A. <laughs> Law, I mean, even beloved sci-fi, like Star Trek Next Generation and uh, Quantum Leap. Is there anything that you're recognized from that surprised you, that you're like, oh, yeah, I was in that, or, oh, you guys saw that, or you didn't, anything that you recognized um, that surprised you? <laughs> when I was, I was, sometimes between... Uh, seasons, uh, I, w- I would go back to New York and do a, a, a play. And when you're on the street in New York, uh, you know, even, even though people are usually pretty reticent to, 
invade your space or, 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 or to approach you that much, you can usually overhear if they Ooh. if they recognize you and what and, and what they're recognizing you from. Yeah. So for a week, I, I kind of kept track. I just want I was just curious <laughs> what, what it was, and this was uh, this was at, right after um, uh, all the space had, had had its one week run at the theaters. Mm, and that's crazy it stuff. Was, uh, it was between yeah, it was between seasons of. Um, of uh, grounded for life, and so and so, um, uh, like I said, usually about close to fifty percent was office space, uh, and mm. then um, you, you know even though uh, you know even though it had really reached its height, its height in terms in terms of it, it was just that it was on it was commercials and, and uh, you know mm. and, and it was in the theaters and that um, then uh, about. Thirty-five uh, percent or so more was um, was uh, um, uh, you know what sure it was it wasn't it was mm-hmm. yeah it was grounded for life and mm-hmm. it was grounded for life and um, and then then there would be like ten uh, percent uh, would be whatever was on late night cable that week huh. so it, it could it could be anything and uh, and, and you know there there were some weeks when. It was Joe Dirt, and I go. How did anybody ever <laughs> recognize me from Joe Dirt? <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, it, and then and then there would be the the last the last sort of five percent or so was people that thought I I, I had taught them in in uh, uh, elementary school or I worked at the local uh, grocery store. Or, you really? Know, you know, just because you, you're finally have, you're yeah. in so much stuff, you're getting that familiar face to them finally, I guess, right? It's like I, I, think I so. know yeah, you, they, I know you. Know that person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's incredible. Did you get? I mean, it was a different world because before, way before social media, did you get recognized a lot after um, that huge movie moment for you in Glory as the quartermaster, as that horrible villain? Like, uh, yeah, it was. Yeah. That was that was sort of amazing because. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I wasn't able to go to the premiere. And so, oh, and in fact, I was, I was moving from, um, New York to LA. Oh, it's such uh, a bummer. And, that's such but, a huge moment for you, that film, you know, that's right. Well, it was nice when, when mm. Glory came out. So I, so after I got settled in LA, I went to see a, a matinee of it and it was just pretty full still. It was, mm. you know, it was during the holidays and all that. And, um, and I was just amazed and, uh, and, and getting and my character getting booed on the, you know uh, from the, from the, from the, the screen. Wow, like, uh, that's uh, incredible. That, that something yeah, that I've never experienced before. Yeah, because uh, nobody had booed me on, on stage before, and <laughs> and, uh, uh, and I had had done a role that that you know that people had wow. felt strongly about. That is yeah. incredible. I mean, like wow. <laughs> Yeah, but that was great. Yeah, and and I I'm sure that 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 doing that got me into a lot of auditions. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, once and once I was here in LA. Hmm. I mean, it's so incredible that the booze, but the booze are, are the booze are actually great applause to your performance. Obviously, so it's just it's well, quite so, quite yeah. a yeah, yeah. It's just because it's such a wild experience. It's gonna be wild feelings. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Man. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was. It was it was a wonderful, it was a wonderful experience. It was a beautiful script, and yeah. and, um, and Ed was a wonderful director, and, mm. and and of course working with with uh, uh, Matthew and and, and uh, mm. uh, you know Morgan Freeman and, and Denzel. Yeah, I, I, I didn't have much. They they, they waited outside while I, yeah. I kind of talked to Matthew. Yeah, yeah, yelling about but, the yeah, shoes I, and the yeah. yeah. But, huh. but 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 you know, but but being in the you know, being there with them and, and you know, being being part of that whole experience was just was just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Well, every every actor's like probably worst nightmare is not remembering their lines or th- having that nightmare where you don't remember your lines. What's your memorization process? Huh. What'd you say? I just I, I you know, I'm not a great memorizer, so I just have to keep keep going at it over and over and over again. I make I make uh, uh, I, I write all my lines out and then I write them out again on, uh, on, on a little piece of paper that I put in my pocket and pull out any time I feel like mm. it to, you know to to work on them and uh, and you know it, it, eventually it seems it seems to work okay uh, 
you know, it, 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 it's, it's uh, and you know, and, and as, as as you get older, it gets it gets a little more difficult to you know to to, to keep them to keep the memorization going. You know, there was a uh, when we were doing um, this was Grounded for Life. Yeah, when we were doing Grounded for Life, there was a joke that they, they couldn't find any. Um, any any bloopers that they, they could put on on the reel at, the, at every uh, when they when they did when they did the end of the season wrap ups because, mm. because of, always on yeah, DVDs specials I, and stuff right yeah 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 because I used I used to get all the lines right so I don't I don't know if that was true or not but <laughs> <laughs> huh that's very cool huh man. So one of your most biggest trademarks is your mustache. Like, have you been like um, ever tempted to shave it and not been able to just because of rolls and stuff, or or you know? Um, it's, it's the red. I, I, I had the mustache when I came out. Um, you know, when I was in the army, I had a mustache, and Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Series, yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I had, I had, so I had a bed, and uh, and we shot it on the Paramount lot, right next to where they were shooting Star Trek. And I, so I would run to Star Trek people all the time. They said, "Oh, you got to come and do, a, you know, a next generation with us, do a next generation with us." I said, yeah, "I'd love to." He said, "But you know, you're gonna have to shave your mustache because uh, uh, the um, Mike Westmore has total." Control over over the facial features right now of all the characters. And I hmm. said, I said, yeah, that's fine. And, you know, when I, yeah, I was what? doing theater, it'd be on so off, you, you know, yeah. it was never, mm -hmm. never a question. Yeah. And uh, sure enough, when um, when they canceled uh, um, uh, Ferris Bueller, uh, I got I got cast in uh, uh, a Next Generation episode, and uh, then they said they said, okay, uh, you're gonna have to go meet with Mike and. Uh, and he and you're gonna have to shave your mustache, and he's gonna make a plaster cast of your face. Blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. So we did all that. Then it turned out because because the uh, um, uh, the story uh, Inner Light, I think the episode was called, uh, mm -hmm. has has Picard lived the whole life of, of this guy um, in, in, in the course in the course of. of Oh yeah, that was an. I remember seeing that. That was an incredible. That was the first time I ever saw that kind of story. I think I've seen it since in a couple. I don't know, comic booky type stuff or a Black Mirror or something like that. But yeah, was, I remember being blown away. And whenever that came out, in middle school, we were like, whoa! It was just like it really kind of cemented Star Trek: Next Generation as like one of the most important things on TV for real. Like, wow, this is amazing. Well, yeah, I remember that. It was. It was. I think it was, it was Patrick's favorite episode. Yeah. Partly because his son had a nice run on it. Played his son. Oh, wait, well, his actual yeah. son played his son in it? Or? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was like heartbreaking, right? Because he wakes up and it's like, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. And, 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 so I, and so I had, uh, and so I had no, I had no mustache. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> I got cast in, um, uh, in Free Willy. Mm -hmm. uh, with, you know, without so, uh, a mustache. So I'm, uh, so for 13 weeks, I'm, I'm in, in Mexico and, and uh, uh, Seattle and Portland and Astoria uh, shooting Free Willy. And, um, uh, and then um, I come back to L.A. and start doing auditions, and, I'm not, and nothing is happening. And, you know, I, I've been very busy up until that point. Mm -hmm. So my, my agent starts asking around, is there, you know, is there a problem? And uh, all, all the casting people said, no, 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 we, we love Rich. We just don't know how to use him without the mustache. Wow. So I grew it back. Huh. And, and pretty much had, had it ever since until um, this, uh, this movie that I did, The um, uh, Adventures of the Naked Umbrella. Um, uh, I, was, I was playing a, uh, uh, a, a cross-dressing uh, mm. drug dealer. And so, and so they, they, you know, they, mm -hmm. they had a wig and, you know, and, yeah. and, and, they, and they wanted me to be clean shaven. And so I said, no, why not? You know, it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. And so, and so I, um, uh, and so I shaved for that. And then I had another, movie, had two other films right after that. And uh, when, 
went to Virginia and did this next one, and and it worked good for me to be clean shaven because I was, you know, I was a a, a, a regular Republican, and, and then hmm. and then I went uh, went up to um, uh, Rhode Island to do. Um, uh, we we had been doing this this uh, uh, web series called Poor Paul, hmm. and uh, I hmm. played Grandpa Paul, and. Um, and the direct writer director and I said, Oh, you know, where's your mustache? I said, Oh, I had to shave it. I don't know. And he said, Well, just let let your beard grow as, as however it grows from through the course of those shoot because we're shooting more or less in in sequence. So, you know, let's let's just see, you know, by the time, you know, you're done what you know, what what it looks like. And so I said, Okay, so hmm. so through the course of it I, my my mustache grew back and I had now something will be here mm. and um and so, and so uh we, we finished up they said that worked out great we like the way you know we like the way that, that you, you helped us uh, tell tell time in the in the, in the course of, this, uh, of the film da, da, da. so i come back i come back to la and um uh and i and uh and then things uh essentially shut down for mm. uh with covid and so I, I said, well, just let, you know, I'll just let it grow. I'm not going to go around with it. So the, the first, I can't remember what the first thing I, I did after that, but it was, it was something, oh, yeah, the, the mustache is great. I mean, the, the beard is, is great. Mm. So I had this full beard. And and if you feel, if you remember, I had a, I had a full beard as the warden in Barry. Mm-hmm. And, and the thing was, like, for three years, uh, <laughs> everything, every, everything that I, I was doing, the people wanted me to have have this beard so oh. it just so suddenly now the beard is the is, wow. is, is the look I, and i still have it now huh. well you're a trendsetter <laughs> <laughs> are, are you happy with the beard or what do you feel like are you, do you it, feel like you want the beard what what is fine. yeah i, yeah, I have hmm. no feeling about one or the other you know it's it you know it, whatever 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 they want me to look like i'm, I'm happy to look like that yeah <laughs> It's funny. I'm kind of on my beard journey, my, this mustache journey too, as well. Cause like, um, I would change my facial hair with the seasons or, you know, like, not like clockwork, but you know, somebody said, want a mustache, I couldn't stand a mustache. Yeah. I wanted chops. I wanted the Tony Stark. I wanted this battle Lincoln beard or whatever, you know, <laughs> and, uh, then COVID happened. And so, and you had to wear a mask everywhere, you know, in public. And so right. I didn't, I, I, st- I love my facial hair, but it's like, you're not showing it off. And I didn't want to just like shave a square, you know, the beard. So I just kept it, right. kept the beard on the bushier side. Cause you know, so people could tell I had facial hair. I don't know. Yeah. And, um, then after the mask mandate came off, you know, sometime later, after a long time, I had quite a beard. And so I was like, well, before I do anything different with it, I mean, I'll put some wax in the stash, you know, since I had so yeah. much facial hair there in that area too. And, uh, Man, I got I got so many compliments and mentions from like children to to elderly to you know the tough looking guy with his girlfriend to everybody like, hey cool mustache bro I love your I love your you know you know cute alternative girl everybody like it was like wow so it's like it was kind of funny where before you didn't know if like oh the cute girl's smiling at you for this reason or the guy's giving a heads up because of that reason. But now it's like people love the stash and beard to the point that if I shaved it it'd be like a thing it'd be like a. People would be like, why'd you do that? I mean, you know, people who you don't even know, you know, at the grocery store, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, I got to do something with this and I'm trying to figure it out. So, you know, so I'm kind of on a mustache thing too. I might not get cast as, in as many, uh, yeah, I'm doing a lot of independent horror here right now lately. And so I almost felt maybe, maybe I would have the same problem you had in that brief window where I wouldn't get cast as much clean shaven again. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was the other thing too. Eventually, eventually I'd say, I, I told my agent, I said, well, you know, it takes, it takes about six weeks to get a a full beard Mm. back. And in between, you know, it's, it's sort of a mess. I mean, you know, if 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 it's a character that you can look like a mess, that's great. But if you can't, uh, you know, you know, let that, let the people know that, you know, that, uh, that are looking for, uh, looking for someone that (laughs) has got this beard. And if they, you know, and if they, if they want it, that's good. And if they if they if they don't, uh, you know, uh, then they can, they can offer, I guess. <laughs> It kind, of, it kind of reminds me of, um, I remember watching Sons of Anarchy, and when you watch the earlier episodes, like, their their leather cuts are all clean, and almost obviously, like, just from, from an right. assembly line, and most, they're almost all clean-shaven, which is funny, and then as the seasons go on, they have a big grizzly beard, and whatever, right. 
and you can almost tell in very early episodes, maybe even the pilot, like, oh, they have a lot of five o'clock shadows where they were, they're really trying to grow these out in time, right? <laughs> just like they've been bikers for a while, not just, oh, it was cast for a month ago. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, what's on the immediate horizon? I know you're still kind of in limbo with the strike, or with the, the, the tail end, yeah. hopefully the epilogue, hopefully the ending of the strike for sure, but, uh, yeah. yeah. But uh, what's it well, on the horizon? Just know, to... I, I, I don't imagine I don't imagine anything is going to start much before the first of the year. Hmm. So, oh yeah, um, the holidays you know, as well. Anyway, right? Yeah, so, yeah. because of the holidays, exactly. Yeah. Um, there's there's another number of um, uh, you know, there's a number of films that are floating around um, uh, uh, festivals and 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 such. Um, uh, there's one called Tonic, in which I play uh, a serial killer. Mm. Um, but you don't you, you don't know that he's he's, oh. he's a dog walker late at night, and um, and it's it's just, it's just you know it's 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 a second a secondary story that that uh, you know that, that kind of feeds in. Uh, then the, then there's uh, uh, Naked Umbrella. Um, and Tonic actually has gotten like a hundred percent uh, 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 whatever that tomatoes. Oh are. yeah. hundred percent around tomatoes. Yeah. Oh good. Yeah. yeah. Which, yeah, which is, is, is great. And then uh, yeah. uh, the uh, invisible raptor. Um, then there's a couple, a couple of, uh, uh, there's a short called Purgy, which is uh, about uh, purgatory is actually. And, oh. uh, and then there's a, uh, there's a, um, Another short called, uh, which is actually a pilot, uh, mm. spec pilot called um, uh, "For Years to Come," which mm. seems, seems to have a lot of um, uh, some, you know, a fair amount of interest. So it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, if it if it continues. Uh, and uh, then it, um, uh, it's a it's a, a father and son that that have have been kind of uh, estranged, and um, and the son comes back home when his mother sick and dies and uh, and decides to stay and helps the father out a little bit mm -hmm. and then uh, and then uh, you know there's there's a lot of a lot of little things that are you know that that have that are out there and it's mm -hmm. just a matter of you know, if, if they're gonna if anything's gonna happen with them or not mm -hmm. Yeah, you're in that sweet spot, I'd say, like, where you're, you're super well-known, you're A-list and everything, but, like, you're, like, kind of seemingly, at least, accessible, and it sounds like, you know, to, like, a lot of creatives to do, like, any kind of things, like Invisible Raptor, and then, like, these shorts that you're, you know, part short, part pilot, you know, oh. Yeah. Wow. Well, it's great, it's great. I mean, it's always sort of been, been uh, you know, my, my, my MO is, is that, is that, uh, you know, if, if the if the script is is interesting, mm -hmm. if you know if, if I really if I really uh, like the script, and then if I like the character, and then if I like the people that that are doing it, you know, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a shot because you know this, this is what I, I you know I enjoy doing. It's like my uh, I, I'm the oldest of seven, and my mm -hmm. and my youngest brother just retired, mm -hmm. and uh, up until up until now, every time one one of the kids uh, retired. You know, they have a question be, you know, when are you going to retire? I said, from what? I'm doing what I love to do. Yeah, you're and, you, you know, you're existing, and, you're, yeah, you're being you. <laughs> yeah, and as, as long as I can do it, I'm, I'm you know, this, this is what I want to do. Yeah, it sounds like, yeah, no, totally. Like, I remember, like, in grade school, it kind of reminds, I remember being in grade school and people, and I, I knew I was an actor and everything and um mm -hmm. i was already doing theater my like, i knew i was an actor and i and I, didn't, I don't think i put into words like i'm an actor or i'm gonna be an actor or, you know whatever what have you uh but i remember they said in school like what do you want to be when you grow up they were saying there was that time in grade school and people are like oh fireman yeah. astronaut and some people are like oh i don't know you know and um and i was like oh an actor i just kind of knew you know <laughs> it was kind of funny so yeah yeah it's and uh, I don't know, it almost says like you're kind of like me in the way that like i mean you want to get paid and everything but I, I only do roles that I would be willing to almost do for free. I mean, you want to get paid, mind you. You know what I mean? But I mean, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. if, if this isn't something that you could afford, yeah, if you could afford yeah. to do, you would, you know I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. For the most yeah. part. So. I mean, that's how I, if I'm choosing between a couple, I, I always choose it. Like, well, which one I, which one would I do for free if I had to? Uh, do, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, awesome, man. 
Well, it's been so great talking to you, Richard. We've taken enough of your time. Man. Right now, you're from, you're in Portland now? Yeah, I'm in I'm back and forth, but born and raised in Portland, and I'm in Portland now. That's where we're uh, headquartered here doing this. I mean, we could do this show remotely, technically, okay. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, you, so you've been, I mean, you did Portland for free willy you were here. Were you, have you been to Portland much, or? Yeah, yeah, I was, uh, well, I did, uh, uh, I think, six seasons, uh, with the Arctic Shakespeare Festival. Oh, awesome. Oh, and, really cool, yeah, and, beautiful. Yeah, and I was up, up in Seattle. Uh, for about, um, I don't know, about, about six or eight years. Uh, um, and uh, so, yeah, so I spent time in Portland, although I don't think I ever uh, performed in Portland. I did a couple mm -hmm. a couple of films that were shot around Portland, but mm -hmm. that was about it. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder if, well, if, the, if the tax incentives are better here again, because I know they're going up and down. But, yeah, it's like, and I, I lived in uh, Burbank when I was in L.A., kind of by Toluca Lake, uh -huh. right next to it. Yeah. And uh, when you said yeah. Bob's Big Boy, I was like, yeah, I remember Bob's Big Boy in Burbank. I mean, there's probably more than one, yeah. but I used to go to Moe's across the street from no, there. No, that was and... wrong. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they, they moved in apartments on Maple, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I lived right yeah, across from uh, now, I yeah. lived right across from Warner Brothers. And, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, if you're ever in Portland, hit me up. <laughs> well, I'll certainly do that. Yeah, I, I can only hope to be in a project with you at some time in the near future, hopefully. Well, that'd be great. Yeah, Mustache Brothers. Maybe we could do a, <laughs> a live-action exactly. Mario Brothers with our mustaches, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember as a kid when, because um, you were already famous, when uh, they made that they made a Super Mario Brothers movie. I don't think it did super well. It didn't blow up, at least. It didn't make a sequel. With uh, Bob Hoskins, yeah. great Bob Hoskins, and uh, John Leguizamo. Right, yeah, but I remember yeah. when I first saw the poster as a kid, like, I don't know if I was in the theater for Batman, you know, 89's Batman for with Michael Keaton or, or Jurassic Park or whatever Mario Brothers was coming out then. And I, was, and I almost for a millisecond from far away thought it was you. you know, I, didn't, I don't think I knew yeah. you by name yet, but yeah, I was like, oh, that's uh, Bob Hoskins. <laughs> no, no, it's a Roger Rabbit guy, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah, no, that, that was yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one day though. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Still time. Yeah. Is there any role before you go that uh that has eluded you? You know, not Mario probably, but like any any that you almost had. You're like, oh, I really yeah. wanted that one. Or. Well, you know, there 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 are times when you know when it just didn't work out uh, mm. uh, scheduling wise. I I was mm. um I, I was doing um. Uh, this movie with, uh, with um, uh, Michael Keaton, and mm. um, and there was there was one scene that we had shot. That actually, that scene was even with Michael. It was with um, it was with Brian Cox. Oh, really and, cool! Yeah, um, he's awesome. Yeah, yeah no, I, I I think Brian is Brian Cox and um, Danny Trejo. I think I've worked with the most of. Them. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah, but um. Uh, but so so and they they kept postponing it because they had other stuff they needed to get and I had auditioned for Titanic and mm -hmm. um and uh, they got my agents got the call saying uh, we would like to hire him for Titanic can he be in Rosarita on such a date and then they said well he's 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 doing he's finishing up this film he has one more scene to go. Um, but he could probably get down there and and do because you just need him for the going on up the gangplank scene, right? And they said, yeah. And they said, okay, so we could probably get him down there and uh, and uh, and then get him get him back if you get him back in time to do the the the, 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 the scene in in the um, you know in, in the, in the movie. But anyhow, um, and uh, um, then maybe we could work it out. And they went back and forth and back and forth. They finally said, "No, we can't take a chance that he won't, won't be that he'll not be available for one or the other." And so oh. I wasn't wasn't able to do it too tight. And that would have been another case of work that can't be made. Yeah. Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was her, her table. It was oh. the, 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 the Molly Brown table. Yeah. Oh, you would have fit right in there too, man. Yeah, it would have been fun. Yeah. Huh. Oh. Well, opportunity will not stop knocking for you, I'm sure. You, you got the talent, you have the, the pedigree, and yeah. Well, thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. Oh, of course. Oh. 
Well, I'll talk to you in the future, and yeah, can't wait to hopefully one day work with you, and uh, definitely be seeing much of your work. Fuzzy Head, I'm going to probably look, look for Fuzzy Head this weekend, if it's a plenty of theater here. Okay. A lot of art house uh, okay. theaters here, as you can imagine, in Portland, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. Good chance, yeah, but if it's not, I mean, I'll head up streaming for it, but yeah. An Invisible yeah. Raptor, which I never heard of, even, but I, I'm really interested in that. That sounds like a hoot. So, yeah. I think it is. I think it's all the places played so far is... Um, some sci-fi um, uh, uh, festival in Spain, and they said, hmm. and they, they they told me that they, that they loved it, even though you know it was it was you know subtitles. That, that, that wow. Was, okay. Was Very yeah. cool. Wow, that's a hugely great sign. Yeah. 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 All right. So yeah, I think oh, so everyone look for Invisible Raptor, but it sounds like it's it's going to be hitting us hard. Though we'll definitely be seeing it. It sounds like it might go viral. So something hearing something like that. It's really good news because I bet it's going to be even more gigantic here nowadays than it, you know, would have been if it came out like the '90s or something. You know, so. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, very cool. Well, thanks again, Richard. I'll, I'll definitely love to talk to you again, and uh, terrific. See you in the future and see more of you. Thanks again for truly sharing Hollywood history and a lot of your awesome yeah, personal that. tales. <laughs> well, thanks. My pleasure. Thanks, man. Okay, take care. Have a good one. Talk to you in the future. And that was screen icon and legend Richard Real. Watch all those things. And I mean, if you just Google them, you'll catch all the things and maybe things like Office Space. I think I'm going to watch again tonight. I'm going to look that one up because I mean, that's the classic. I, oh, like he said, quotes, quotes aplenty. And we'll be right back after this brief message. That Kevin One Share was brought to you in part by T Mobile, the Uncarrier. What's better than your favorite talk show? Well, maybe. Homemade delicious food, cold beer, or a drink of your choosing in a comfortable atmosphere. Well, look no further than the Boulevard Tap House. For the world famous fish and chips, seafood, all around delicious menu with pizza, all kinds of food, wings, steak bites, anything you can imagine when you want to watch the big game or catch some live jazz if you pick the right night. Open seven days a week. Go to BoulevardTapHouse.com right now. I like to go to their Terwilliger Curve location. That's the uh, the uh, home location for their not only their fish and chips, and they knew that they always used to give me uh, um, Caesar Caesar chicken salad and wine. Um, they kind of made jokes, and made fun of me that my favorite food there now might just be the brand new Mark Kevin. That's a margarita pizza named after me. <laughs> don't know if they did it because I'm Italian or what, but I had it, and it is delicious and, uh, dare I say, nutritious. Anyway, friends, go on in. Have a great time. When you're there, you truly are family. No cap. Enjoy the Boulevard Tap House today. This portion of that Kev One show is supported by Bohemian Dream Gifts. Made with organic and natural oils that nourish and hydrate your skin. Man, I don't know if it's the weather outside or the gym that was killing my skin. Because my right elbow on the, uh, it itched like the Dickens. Like I was become like a lizard from Marvel Comics. Um, I think it's that machine where you put your elbow in and do the lifts, you know, for the bicep. But, uh, I was itching my skin like crazy during, uh, well, I won't say hooks. I don't want them associated with rough skin. With one of our guests <laughs> here in the near future here. <laughs> but my left, my right elbow was getting ashy and coming up, getting red and irritated. Anyway, I used some of the promotional cookie dough body oil from Bohemian Dream Gifts that they gave us. And my skin, I'm not kidding, came back. I can vouch for that one. The cookie dough oil baby body oil. The cookie dough body oil brought my skin back to life like an evanescent song. I'm not kidding. My skin is smooth and happy again. 100%. You can buy cookie dough oil on Etsy at the Bohemian Dream Gifts shop. Check out their other stuff as well. But that's one that I, that I swear by now. <laughs> and as soon as my promotional one runs out, I'm going to order some myself. So go to Etsy and visit the Bohemian Dream Gifts shop today. Well, friends, the theater lights have come back on overhead. Please clean up the candy wrappers you snuck in and traverse safely. See you next week. Or super fans online at patreon.com backslash that Kev one show. Good night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.